In this short video, we're going to talk about finding the equation of a line. And we have three different parts to it, but this little part I'm just going to do first is if you're just given a graph. So just taking a quick look down here, and we have these three graphs, three graphs we're going to come up with the equation of the line. But I want to review first this really important formula, y equals mx plus b. You have to memorize that, y equals mx plus b. Where so that's something to memorize there. The M stands for the rate of change or the slope. We can count out rise over run or we can use this formula. The B stands for the Y intercept or also the initial value. So this is an important piece of information for you to understand. Here's a graph down here, the first one we're gonna do part A. We have to determine the equation of the lines of each of these three graphs. And I've got some steps below here on how to do that. So the first thing is to find the M value. So that's what's gonna go into my equation right here for M. Now to find M, I've got all these different ways to do it, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna talk about this rise over run here. So rise over run means you find two points on your line, and I've got one that's really hard to see right there. There's a point and here's another one here. I wanna calculate the rise over the run between those two points. So first I draw on there a little triangle. It's hard to see this little right angle triangle there. First I'm gonna count out the rise. The rise is one unit and then the run is, is the length across the triangle and that is one, two, three, four units. So my slope, M stands for slope, has a rise of one over a run of four. So that's the slope of my line, one over four. Next, I have to find the B value. So what is B again? Well, B is the y-intercept or the initial value. So y-intercept, I'm gonna look at my y-axis that's here. Where does my graph hit the y-axis? Right there. That's my y-intercept of two. So my B value is a two the equation of my line. Now to write the equation, your equation always has to have, back up here to the top, it has to have the M and the B, which we figured out, have to be replaced with numbers. But the Y stays a Y and the X stays an X. So my equation is going to be Y equals, so instead of M, I put a one quarter, mx instead of x I keep an x right I don't change the x in the final equation so that's an x we can I rewrite the x on the very top or in the middle but never on the bottom plus b here's my b value is a 2 plus 2 there's the equation of the first line let's try that again with the second line let's start first with the slope remember slope that's the same thing as m they all mean the same thing, and that's our rise over run. So I find two points on the graph that are very clear and easy to see, and I have one here on the y-axis and one here. So I draw a triangle. I draw a triangle down there. Whoops, that should be straight. Draw a triangle down, right angle triangle there. So what's, first I'm gonna, well, let's do this run first. This is the run, the sideways. That's two units long. This isn't a rise. Over here we had a rise. To get from one point to the next point, we had to rise. And we always read graphs from left to right, the same way we read English. So this is my first point here, and this is my second point. To get from my first point to my second point, I have to fall. This is a fall. So this is gonna be a negative number here. And it's going one, two, three, four units there. So when I look at my my slope formula, let me write it here, my slope is rise over run. And I don't have a rise, actually, I, well, I can call it a fall, but it's a negative four because it's not a rise, it's a fall. And I have a run of two. So that's my slope, but I wanna simplify that. I can reduce that to lower terms. I'm gonna divide numerator and denominator both by two. And that will give me a negative two over one which way down here under slope would just write that as a negative two. So there's our slope is a negative two of this blue line. Now we need the B value and the B value is the Y intercept. 
So here's my y-axis. I look on my y-axis for where the line crosses the y-axis and that's my y-intercept. So my y-intercept, that little part I highlighted there, it looks like a five. So my v-value is a five. I'm gonna write the equation of the line. So the equation of the line, the equation is in this form up here, y equals mx plus b, y and x stay y and x, m and b are replaced with these numbers we found. So my equation is y equals negative 2x plus 5. That's the equation of my second line. Let's look at the third and last one. So for the last one here, I'm going to do it a little bit differently. There's another way to calculate m other than counting out the rise over run that we have done. We've, we've done that a lot. Uh, it's more it, that's a little you have to have a graph to count out rise over run and sometimes you have points you can't even identify two good points really well it's hard to do rise over run or if your scale is off if you're counting by you know 15s instead of by ones it can be hard to count out the rise and the run because it's hard to count across um, six units when you're counting by 15s so this formula here is important for you to memorize circle it we're going to we're going to practice this one right here what does all that stuff mean? Okay, remember I said over here, you read a graph from left to right. So starting from the left, imagine there's a big, a big uh, bar going across, like being pushed across a wall, is being pushed across this way. This is the way we're reading the graphs. So we're going across and reading which point, there's a, two good dots on there, which point would you hit first with that wall? You would hit this point first, and then you would keep pushing the wall, and you would hit this point second. That means if we're hitting this point first and we're hitting this point second, then I'm going to label those coordinates uh, respectively. So my first coordinate is zero, four. My second coordinate is four. I colored over that, but I think that is a seven, four, seven. Now my first point, let's see all these little subscripts, the ones and twos there, they are not exponents. Please do not write them up high. They are subscripts. This, let's start with a sec. This was my second point here. Remember this wall going across? It hit this point second. So this is my second point. So this is my second x and this is my second y. The zero would be my first x and the four would be my first y. Now I know how to sub into the formula. Well, it's down here. So subbing into the formula, What's the y2? Look back up here, which one was y2? Which one was our second y? Well, that's the seven. Which one was the first y? That was the four, and it's y2 minus y1, so it's seven minus four. So if I had a negative four there, I would actually have to do a negative and a negative, and this would become a positive. Over, x2, Where, where's my x2? What are these ones? Oh, here it is, there's my x2. So that's a four minus, and where's my x1? Way over there, that's a zero. So I've subbed into the formula, and now I'm going to simplify it. Seven minus four is three over four. I can't simplify that any further, so that is my m, that is my slope, three over four. And what's the b value? Remember what b value stands for? It stands for the y-intercept or the initial value. So I go to my y-axis, I look to see where it crosses, and it crossed right here. We happen to have a point right there. It crossed at 4, so my b value is a 4. My equation, back up to this really important formula right here, this important formula. y and x are going to, I'm going to leave those alone, but I'm going to change my m, and I'm going to change my b. So my equation is y equals, instead of m, I have 3 over 4. x stays x and b is replaced with a plus four. And that is how you find the equation of a line when all you're given is a graph.